My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions. We're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 3,897 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your express consent. Hey everyone. Well, today what I wanted to do was talk about questions for a ServiceNow developer interview. And I've done quite a little bit of interviewing in my lifetime. Um, and it really started out when, and this is probably my fourth, fourth or fifth career. Uh, my first, I guess, real job out of college, I used to interview people for visas to come to the United States. Um, so yeah, I was a diplomat, I was working overseas, and basically I would sit there in this window and just interview about 150 people a day. Uh, did that for about three and a half years, and I think uh, all totaled it was about 56,000 uh, visa interviews I did in that time. So uh, got a little bit of experience doing interviewing um, in that realm, and then it also translated well to the workplace too when I started to uh, manage and lead teams, and uh, you know, you have to hire people. And that's part of the process. So just want to take you through some of the questions I thought um, were not regular questions that you would probably encounter uh, during uh, an interview. So these are just kind of like ideas. And sometimes I use some of these, but I, I don't want to say like I always use these. So uh, we'll just get to number one. And, um, you know, the, the first one I always ask is like, you know, tell me about your current operation um, and you and what your current role is on the team. And then I'll say like, you know, how many people work on your current project? What applications have you implemented on the platform? What version of ServiceNow you've worked with in the past and how many applications have you configured or built? Um, and you'll notice I have you in all caps because I want to hear about what this person has done Not necessarily about you know the rest of their team and all that type of stuff But I definitely want to know you know like how many instances are in their current environment Just like you know paint a picture of you know how many people are there and where you fit uh, Within that operation and then you know you could also talk have them talk about other operations, too um, but you know, you don't want this to be more than like a minute or two answer, right? Don't want this in a drag on. But I do like to keep it open ended. Um, also, you know, it gives them a little bit of a icebreaker. And I feel that this question is great to, for the first one because, you know, the person will get more uh, comfortable um, after they answer this because, um, you know, it's just pretty much them telling you about themselves, right? It's their content, so to speak, that they're giving you. So um, sometimes I'll go into a scenario and, um, you know, this one I kind of love too. Like you've been hired as the lead developer and it's day one with a new client who's brand new to ServiceNow. They have nothing set up yet. You're the lead. What steps do you take to get the environment ready? Um, obviously, you want to get your log on, right? So you don't want to use the system administrator out of the box. So you want to work with your customer to get yourself set up, um, get the admin role, probably get the sec admin role, um, maybe clarify what the group name is going to be for the admins. And then um, one thing I like to do first is instance hardening. So go through that checklist. And I've asked people about this, like after they give me their answer, I'm like, what about instance hardening? And they'll be like, uh, I don't really know what you're talking about. And I've had this answered actually by several developers, or I should say they haven't talked about instance hardening and they didn't know what it was. And I just thought to myself like, wow, you know, like on their resume, they claim that they've set up a client or a customer from scratch, but they never went through like the, the checklist or anything. And here I just pulled up the instant security hardening settings and there's a checklist I believe that goes along with this but basically you go to instant security center um, and it'll give you your score and I like to do this first and I think that you should do it first I mean you know ServiceNow is the ultimate authority on this but I think that this needs to be done first because later on if you go ahead and adjust some of the sys properties and security settings etc um, you could you know do some damage to your applications and the stuff that you've built so um, again, you know, like I like to hear that as part of the answer. 
um, maybe setting up the other instances so that way you can pull the update sets up the stack that type of stuff um, and even I like to practice cloning also um, in the very beginning because again there's nothing really you know to risk right so you can just kind of like experiment with your stack and like your clone settings but again you know like it's up to each um, you know person in the leadership role to really dictate you know what they do in the very beginning but I kind of like to see the way people kind of put this together like what chronology and like what's the like what are the important things um, and again you know it's a brand new client so they should probably talk a little bit about like setting up regular meetings with the client to get them familiar with the platform and stuff like that right and also roles and responsibilities like who who's gonna do what um, you know like from the customer perspective are they actually like writing stories and giving you guys or like giving the team the work or like how, how does all that kind of you know gel together so next one is another scenario um, you've been hired as the lead developer for ITSM two weeks later you know the PM asks you to change roles and configure the HR app what do you do right I like you know I prefer um, candidates who can turn really quickly around and be like, you know what? I might not know a lot about HR, but I'm sure gonna give it a go. Um, but unfortunately, I've experienced um, a lot of developers that they'll get in there and be like, look, this is what I was hired for. So I'm out or, you know, I don't wanna do it. And I just think that like, you know, the more dynamic you are and willing to flow with the environment, the better and more successful you're gonna be um, going forward. And also like ITSM, let's face it, like 90% of the developers out there know ITSM. So it's not really a big deal, right? So if you really want the challenge, right, then you go with something that you don't know. Um, and sometimes I'll switch this up and say, you know, like the PM asks you to develop a custom application, you know, instead of doing ITSM. You know, it just depends on, you know, what you're looking for. Um, uh, if you're a PM and you're going to use these questions or if you're a candidate, and you're reading this and you're saying, you know what, like for me, I'd have to be honest. I just want to do ITSM stuff. Right. So but I think it's just better to be honest, um, you know, in your response to this question. OK, so um, I'll pull a problem out from the deck that like my operation has experienced in the past that I know the answer to. So I'll say something like, you know, I couldn't get um, this one related list to populate. I was trying to, you know, set up a relationship um, and I couldn't get it to do what I wanted or, you know, maybe something with the service portal front end. Um, you know, there was, an, a client, there was a client script that wasn't running, um, you know, and, you know, just given the scenario that I faced in the past, and I would ask them, you know, like, how would you go ahead and, and solve this problem, right? So you can also pull one out from, from like your own um, past experience because again, like you're gonna know the answer. However, though, as we know with the platform, there's not only one answer most times, right? So um, I think this is a, a good one that you can use, um, you know, if you've been in the game for a little bit, but if you haven't been in the game, no big deal. You know, maybe you could ask a, a developer um, a problem that they had. I remember one that, um, you know, a great one was that this one assignment group kept, kept getting assigned incidents and they couldn't figure out why. Well, it was in a workflow that kept attaching to that incident. Um, and I don't know why they had workflows running against the incident table. That's a different story. But anyway, um, that workflow kept assigning the, uh, the incident to that assignment group and finally it was figured out. So, you know, I uh, just kind of want to see how people think with this question. And then um, here's another great one for um, developers that are experienced. So like, tell me about an application that you moved into production and that thing got hammered, right? Like something went wrong, um, you know, maybe it wasn't populating certain um, fields that it should have been, the business rules weren't running, uh, maybe it wasn't assigning to the correct group because the group wasn't brought up from the development or sub-production environment into the production environment, like be specific on like what you did, like what are the actual actions that you did to correct the issue? Did you go into prod immediately and like just fix it because that's what was needed? Um, I can give you a great example of one where move something into prod, um, it was actually just data, 
update a bunch of sys user records and I, I, I didn't know that there was a notification on the sys user table um, and this had affected several thousand users so I went in there ran a background script to go ahead and kill all those uh, messages in the outbox before they went to sent so unfortunately there were I think like 7,000 that were sent out but out of 170,000 you know what are you gonna do um, they, it was already out there and you know I just got to it as quickly as I could um, but you know I would just give them the steps on what exactly happened so here's uh, another one like tell me three new features um, in you know Paris I guess that's our current version right and if they've only been using Orlando just switch it to Orlando right so like this one you could use um, almost all the time because again you're probably supposed to know these things for your Delta anyway so if you do have the certification and you're taking these deltas, you should, you should probably know a couple of the new features. So this one I'm kind of lenient on. Sometimes I'll just be like, you know, just name me one new feature. Um, you know, if they can't do it, they can't do it. But you'll be surprised. Some people just, they, they can't um, articulate the new features that are out there. And yeah, if you want to know the, the new features, sure, I did that, you know, five new things in Paris video. You can go check that out on the channel. Um, and I'll tell you a couple that I really liked in Paris were just those two new variables. I think it was like the HTML and the attachment variables. They were pretty cool. Okay, so the next one is like, was there ever a time that you had to go against best practice in order to meet a customer's requirement? I mean, how many times has this happened in a lifetime? Probably like, I mean, I don't think I could name a client that hasn't asked me to do something that, um, you know, didn't go against best practice in order to meet a requirement you know I could I could think of like one clear example of that myself that you know I just went in there and I did it you know and um, you know I know that people sometimes um, they get wrapped around the axle with the best practice just remember that like best practice is really a function of time and place and that as we move forward you know let's just say five ten years from now some of these best practices won't be around because the technology um, we'll just catch up with the fact that we can automate some of these things, right? Instead of doing them uh, manually. And one good example I can think of was where the client wanted to know um, how many updates were made um, to an incident before it was, I want to say, resolved or assigned. I can't remember which one. And I think I went into like the sys audit table or something like that to, to get those. Um, data points out of there just because I didn't know the platform well enough and you know people were like oh you should never do reporting on the sys audit table look man at the end of the day um, I could tell you that that specific client I remember developers would be like off with their heads if they didn't do what they wanted so you just have to make your own decision but I always I, you know I like asking this question because I like to hear the response again and you know like a lot of these questions there is no right or wrong it's just like um, seeing if the person like if their lot the logic they employ right um to come to the conclusion is valid right and also i like to look at um if the person is going to be a good fit for the rest of the team that already exists right doing the work and then lastly i think this is the last question i call it the silicon valley question i did uh two interviews with google uh, I think one was in 2007 and one in 2013. And they asked me this question, like, have you ever built an application on your own? But you could also spin it, right? Like to say, okay, have you ever built an application in ServiceNow? Or you could say another platform or elsewhere on your own. And I thought that was like kind of a cool thing. And it just gives you that, um, that perspective, right? On the way they approach um, hiring people like if you try to like take a risk and do th something on your own um, that's more of like a, a valuable asset even if you failed right that's what they look for um, for the big like tech companies um, out there in Silicon Valley I thought this is a very useful question and um, I'd almost always ask people this because like if they didn't do well on the other ones like at least this would tell me that they would go out there on their own and um, kind of like play with the platform or you know try to build something just for themselves you know I think this is cool um, I think also another place where I interviewed and they asked me this was Cloudflare um, they had asked me this question I've ever built anything on my own so I thought this was like a very valuable question um, to ask um, you know developers that you'll be interviewing 
Okay, so I think that's it. And um, if you like the, the questions, go ahead and click like or leave a comment. Uh, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.